like I have my letters of recs in order, my resume. I just wanted to go over my personal statement because I don't feel 100% okay with it just yet. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> sure, of course. So tell me, why, why don't you feel 100% about the personal statement? I don't know. I don't know if it's conveying everything I wanted to convey. And I'm having trouble knowing what to take out and what to put in. I want to I wanna include, well, I wanted your opinion. If I should include that I'm the first in my family to ever even try to go to law school, that's not in there. And I realized after I wrote it that maybe I should. And I don't know if I'm going... I read an article online that says sometimes if you're just kind of itemizing your resume, they don't like that. And I don't know if I was doing that. So that's why I don't think I'm 100% okay with it. Sure. Well, those are great issues and questions. I'm glad you brought them up. First off, it is worth noting if you're the first in the family to pursue law school. Okay. It's worth noting if you're the first in your family to go to college. They like to see that. They like to get that background on you. Secondly, you, it's correct that you don't want to itemize your resume. And so the way to tell if you're doing that or not is how many different experiences are listed there that are not directly related to each other. So in yours, you have the business law class, you have the business you worked for, you also have things involving the judge, right? So there's a variety of different experiences there within totally different contexts. And they're all great. I mean, I wish that you could include all of them. I wish you could have five statements covering each one in depth. But the problem is that the more things you cover, the less deep you can go on each one. So it's a quality versus quantity thing. So if you look at the different things you listed, what is the one experience or story you would want to share above all others? Uh, I don't know. I feel like with without sounding too forward, I do like them all because I feel like they're, they're really are different experiences. Um, like the, the fashion company that I worked for was completely different from interning for a judge. It was two completely different worlds. Um, but when I was speaking with my former business law professor, she said that she thinks the experience working for that international startup company is something that carries a lot of weight. So I guess I would probably keep that the most if I had to pick. Sure then that could be a route you take. Just see, could you, what additional details could you include on that to flesh it out more if you had more space? So do you think I should be taking out some of the other experiences and adding on to the fashion company? Well, there's the, also the question of length. So to some extent, you might need to take out some of the other experiences without adding that much more about the fashion company. And I know that's obviously not what you wanna hear. You wanna share as much as possible. But there are tough decisions, and unfortunately, there is some sort of page limit and space limit on these statements. And right. it's generally along the lines of two pages double-spaced. And what you've sent me is a little bit more than two pages single-spaced. So yeah. unfortunately, you're going to have to make some tough decisions. Okay. At, at the same time, though, there could still be other ways to include the other stories somewhere in your application. There is an opportunity to include a diversity statement. There sometimes is the opportunity to include, is there anything else you want to tell us? Okay. There are occasionally other essays as well, like why our school in particular. And so there could be ways to work that other stuff in too. Do you think that I should be catering my personal st statement to each school that I'm applying to, or is one generic one okay? Typically, a generic one could cover all schools. Okay. Usually, the questions don't really differ. Usually, the question is some form of tell us whatever you want or tell us why law school. And you can address that either directly or indirectly. I think in some, in, at some point, your application should communicate the answer to that question, why law school, even if you don't say it outright directly. So I would say have something related to your reasons for pursuing law school, reasons for pursuing law. And it sounds like all your stories are doing that, really. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you, because I think that's another reason why I'm not 100%. I don't know if my stories are completely saying why I want to go to law school. And the truth is, is exactly what I put in the statement. I do like to help people, and I, I like to help people in, I guess, just 
in, in the legal field is really what it is. I work as a paralegal and I enjoy, I don't like when people have problems, but I enjoy solving them for them. So that really is the reason why I want to go. And I, and I try to break it down with the whole problem solving in each position and try to bring it full circle. Did you agree with that approach? Did you like how I wrote that? Or do you think I should change that up a little bit? I liked it. I liked that you started with a very specific anecdote and then you zoomed out from there. You started with the business law class in particular being sad that class was, class was finishing up. You wanted to continue. So I guess the one thing I would ask is, what were they covering that you wanted to continue that you didn't want it to end? So I think a little more detail on that would have helped it come to life more. But otherwise, I, I liked that approach overall, though. Okay. It's interesting because the, what I learned was basically problem solving. It was contracts, but it was discussing... Um, how a contract can help somebody in a difficult situation, like how to apply certain laws in that contract um, to know if somebody is breaking it or in breach or whatever the case may be. So it was, to me at least, tied into problem solving. So I think that's why I was so interested in it. So I'll definitely take that feedback and try to include that in there. That's awesome. I love that. And the next thing that would be even cooler is if there were a way to tie in what you were learning about breach of contract in class to the startup fashion business. Is there an area in the startup fashion business where something along those lines happened that was loosely related? It doesn't have to be. But okay. if there were an example like that, that would be a really cool parallel to show you, to show you and to show them how what you learned in the class actually came to life. Well, I actually took that job before I took that class. So I'd have to go back and think and see how because it was such a long time ago, honestly, it was like six years ago, but it was an important part of my life. That's why I included it. But I see what you're saying. And that would be cool. I'm going to try to think, think really hard because it was like I said, a long time ago, how I can tie that in. Um, but yeah, I definitely like that recommendation. Thank you. Of course. And it could, it could work in the reverse too. It could be that you saw something like that play out in the business and then you saw the theory behind that in class. It could go in both directions. Okay. And it doesn't even have to be that it actually occurred. It could be hypothetical just to illustrate the importance. So you could say, this issue is, is important in the startup fashion business because if X, Y, Z doesn't happen, then there's big problems and people make agreements, but then the real world reveals itself and problems occur. And so that's why we have these contracts to address these things, but also contingencies if they don't. Right. Yeah. And that's obviously something that happens all the time at work. I mean, it is real estate law, but there is constant problems and there's people that are trying to break their contracts at times, especially now during the pandemic that we're in, you know, people were not within their rights to cancel and, you know, there's coronavirus and they don't want to buy a house anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see how the world is evolving and how it does affect the law. Oh yeah, definitely. There's all sorts of unexpected things. And obviously in 2020, there have been several unexpected things. But that's why, there, that's why there are contracts. And you also have the question of what is, an, what is an, in quote unquote act of God that goes outside of the norms of what's to be expected? Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. And I mean, you do get some people that have that nice mentality and they'll let people out and there are others that are just not like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the world works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What other questions um, do you have for me about this? I'm trying to think. I feel like that was it because I don't know... I guess I don't know why I wasn't 100% on it. I think I'm just looking for feedback in general because I've never written a personal statement before. This is the first time I've ever done it. I've never applied to law school before. So I guess if there's just any other recommendations you, you could think of would be good for me because I think that pretty much covers everything I was going to ask. Sure. Yeah, well, I would say let's try focusing on the startup fashion business as the primary personal statement topic and then okay. seeing what other elements of this statement you could fit into your application elsewhere. Like you talk about your background and your family, I think you could certainly write a diversity statement if you would like to. So I would, I would excerpt that section of the personal statement draft that you have now and see what you might flesh it out or expand it on into becoming a separate diversity statement. I'm glad you said that because now I remember that is something I was concerned about. Um, so, I guess the reason why I thought I shouldn't write a diversity statement, even though I know I'm part of a minority group, I'm surrounded by so many Hispanic people. And to me, it's it's just normal. Like, hey, we want to pursue this career. But I know that in in looking at the grand scheme of things, it's 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 a minority group. I just didn't know if my situation is diverse enough to give it a statement. Give it it a certainly statement. is. From, from a law school's perspective, it is. And it's not about whether you're diverse in your current context. It's about 
would you bring diversity to the law school context where Hispanics are not the majority? That would be a, you, you would bring diversity to their work, to their school. And so okay. for that, that's what they're looking for. They're looking to see what diversity you bring to their institution. Is that also two pages or is that just one page? Typically, those are shorter. I don't know that there's always an exact word limit. It may vary from school to school. They're typically going to be shorter than a personal statement. So something like one page double spaced might be a good goal to shoot for. And then you'll see if schools actually have specific word counts on those or page limits on those. I'm writing that down so I don't forget. Okay, cool. So I think I am going to do that then. I think if I take out that one part, it gives me a little bit more wiggle room to play around with. And then I can transfer that information into a diversity statement. And that way I can get them to really see everything I'm trying to convey. Exactly. Sounds like you got it. Perfect. So I'm so happy I spoke to you then because I think that's the biggest thing I was struggling with, what to take out and what to add. Awesome, Laura. Fantastic. Well, before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Uh, I think just your feedback. It's really detailed. It's obvious you took the time to really read my personal statement and give me detailed feedback. And that's something I really do appreciate. My pleasure, Laura. Keep in touch and let me know if you need anything moving forward. Thank you so much. we Will do. Take care. Stay safe. You too. You too. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.